pajama day. Real talk, I was gonna put on some real clothes and I decided, for what reason? Everyone is home, everyone is in pajamas, so let's be truthful. Uh, my mom got me these awesome taco pajamas, so I'm rocking these. So hopefully you're hanging out in your pajamas and we'll enjoy this video as well. Um, I did just do some laundry and I'm honest when I say I did one pair of jeans and like two shirts and then the rest were pajamas. Uh, <laughs> That's our life now, right here in COVID 2020. I am sitting down so that you guys can hopefully see everything as I go through it. Um, hopefully I'm not popping up and down. We'll see if this works. I have Brucey behind me, my little my little muffin, and then the other animal, Sylvia's wandering around here somewhere. This is a bag of sensory stuff as well, so I'll probably be popping up and down, but. I thought today would be fun to share with you guys what I um, have in my bins, and I'll link below, um, that I can make into sensory bins, what my main fillers are, how I did them, all that stuff. So I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I figure, you know, this is kind of a good thing for people who are starting and want to know um, just how to. There's a lot of really cute pictures on Pinterest, Instagram and such, but once you kind of have a set amount of things, it's easy to just throw something together that is cute and entertaining and the kids will love. Um, I will note that my son is 15 months, 14 months, 14 months, 15 months this month. Um, some of the stuff that I do put together is a little older for him and could be enjoyed for all ages, a little bit older than Declan as well. Um, I just like to kind of put things together and if he enjoys them, he does. If not, you know, if he en engages anyway, it's a win. So um, let's get started. Okay, let's start with, I don't know, I'm just gonna kind of dive in here. I already showed you guys my egg carton sensory bin, but I use this for a lot of other stuff as well. He loves this. This is, uh, let's see, magicwatersupply.com. I got this on Amazon. Crinkle cut paper, shredded Yestamix. You can use, uh, if you have Easter egg or Easter basket paper too, that's a really good filler to have, but it just is really fun to, to tear apart. You can hide items in it or literally just put this in a bin. Uh, it's a nice, fun texture. It's different. So that's one thing that he really loves. So we have that on here. Pom-poms. Pom-poms are great for everything. We have, we do a lot of contact paper. Um, the sticky paper that I put on the wall and put these in cotton balls for him to rip off. Um, this is really great for sorting projects, color projects, or just throwing in a sensory bin as a, just a different element. So I always have big pom-poms. I, my son likes to put everything in his mouth right now because he's 14 months. So I have the bigger ones, but um, for younger kids, obviously the little ones are fun and the little ones come in more colors and more variation and like sparkle and you know, that kind of thing. So again, I will post everything that I have um, below. This came in a kit. I don't remember what kit, but they, they do sell them separately. Uh, Declan is not quite able to use them as scissors yet, but I keep them open in sensory bins that have sand or flour or cloud dough. Um, and he uses it as a scoop. You know, it's really great for rice too. Uh, really good for kids to scoop up rice and then drop it into another container. So this is a really good thing to have on hand. I think I got it in the insect kit that I have honestly. Um, I think it's like a bug catcher was what it was uh, labeled as, but it's on, U uh, on YouTube. It's on Amazon as well. So you can get a few of these. This, these are really great to have. Okay. Now this vine. Oh, here's another one. Boop. So see, they came as a kit. So I have a few. These vines I used for his first birthday. We did Very Hungry Caterpillar as our theme. And I hung these from the, um, the blinds. So I have these, I've used these in like our green theme sensory bed. I've used them when we do insects. It's just kind of fun to have, um, on hand. So some Ivy as well. What else we got here? Magic beads. Okay. So these guys, 
Um, I highly recommend them for sensory bags for little ones. And then um, these are water beads, not magic beads, but I call them magic beads. Um, <laughs> so I recommend them for sensory bags for little ones to put them in a Ziploc and then um, tape them shut. I did once try to put them in a sensory bin in which he ate one of them and I had a little bit of a panic attack. Um, they are non-toxic, but I do, I, I have read in the past these horror stories of these kids eating the, the beads um, and they am expanding in their stomach. So like I got panicked, he, he was fine. Uh, he chewed it and it went through no problem. But I would highly suggest uh, if your little one is like mine and puts everything in his mouth, wait on these for um, actual free play, free feel feeling. But um, still get them because you can put them in, in bags and they're a lot of fun to play with. I have one that I just kind of throw out when, when I don't feel like putting together a sensory bin, honestly. It's already set up. So basically you just put some of these in water and just wait and they will get big and mushy. Um, great for sensory bins also. So that's those. And shout out to my friend Jessica who, who gave me this bag. Um, I bought these, but I also have these from her. So thanks Jess. Okay. So I have hair gel. Now this is not necessarily for sensory bins, but sensory bags. I fill um, Ziploc bags with hair gel. And then do I have, I'm sure they're here somewhere. Beads and stuff. I don't know where they are. They're here somewhere. Um, or they may be in another bin, honestly, but um, you could put beads or beans or anything in there with the hair gel for them to kind of push around. So at the end of this video, I will pause and I will show you guys um, my, actually no, that it, I don't have it anymore. I threw it away. So never mind. But uh, if you just fill the hair, the bag with hair gel and beads, they can push them around. It's a really fun texture thing. So I always have an extra thing of hair gel. What else? Cotton balls. Cotton balls are great for sensory bins. I also use them on um, contact paper for him to pull off. Um, I'm going to be using them in our winter wonderland scape sensory bin next week for snowmen or snowballs. Um, I do a blue rice and cloud sky sensory bin with little planes and I use these as clouds. So cotton balls are always a good thing to have around. Tissue paper. I don't even know why I have this. Um, I haven't used it yet. I just figure I would save it. So like if maybe maybe people can use it in, in you know instead of this, just shove it in there just for texture. Um, anything different. So actually a fun sensory bin would be to have this and this in the sensory bin and have him pull it out and feel the different textures of paper. So that's a good idea. Um, but I do have that sponges. So I got a bunch of sponges on Amazon and I cut them in various, this is a very long triangle, various shapes. We've got circles and ovals and, and I just put them in a water bin. He loves it. So that's what I use with those. Just fill the sensory bin with water, throw in the sponges, call it a day. Boom. And you're working on shapes too, because every time they pull one out and say, oh look, you got the pink square. All right. These glitter confetti things, I, or confetti things, they're foil confetti. I got these at the dollar bin in Target. I do not like glitter. Um, that, that won't stop me from using it for if Declan's into glitter but I am not a fan of glitter because it gets everywhere. These are fun though, because they are confetti, not glitter. And even though they do get everywhere, they seem to vacuum up a little bit better than confetti. So, or excuse me, than glitter. So I have those. Okay. These I got on Amazon as well. These are um, plastic buttons for stringing. So they, I'll show you guys. So they do come with, shoelaces for you to string through. He's quite not there yet. Uh, these are a really great project for for kids, uh, but I have used them in sensory bins for uh, shapes, learning, or my color sensory bins. Like if I do an all green sensory bin, I'll just pull out these green colors buttons. 
Um, also really fun for like making when, when the kid's older, uh, making shapes. Like if I pull out this and say, you know, can you recreate that and then have them make the same thing. So, um, and then they have on here as well as some different shapes you can make. So these are really great. This is going to be a mess to clean up. Okay. So I have kind of stuck together. Lily pads. I do a frog sensory bin that I put the lily pads in, some gravel, some of my frog figurines and a piece of wood and water. And he loves it. These just float. So I got a few lily pads. There you go. So I got a few of these for the frog ones. Um, feathers. Feathers are always a good thing to throw in sensory bins. I have popsicle sticks. That's not really for sensory bins per se, but um, I do have popsicle sticks. I have some rogue pom-poms. These are the beads that I was talking about for the sensory bags. So what I do is I fill like with the hair gel. Hair gel beads, put them in a Ziploc bag and then he can push around the beads. So I have those. When he's a little older, I have beans. So I don't want him to swallow these yet, so I have not used these, but beans are a great filler for sensory bins. I have black beans, pinto beans, right here. Let's see what else. Oh, I have some rocks. I use these in any water, anything. Um, he loves these. They're big enough where I don't feel like if he swallow, he, well, he won't swallow them, that's what I mean. They're big enough where I feel like he's not going to be able to swallow them. Let me show you guys. So, um, and he doesn't really try and put these in his mouth. He just really likes pulling them out. So I use these for my shark sensory bins. I use these for my frog sensory bins, my ocean sensory bin. Um, I've used it for when we did a train scene. I use these a lot. So these rocks are really a fun addition for anything. All right, what's next? Um, I got, this is a save everything. I got these in a box when I got my makeup. It is black shredded paper. And I use this for Halloween sensory bin and I'm sure I'll use it again. So save everything that you come across that you think will be beneficial. So I have that in here. Let's see what else. Oh. This is really fun. I only have a small amount of it because I didn't need that many, but um, these are bow tie pastas that I dyed black for little bats for Halloween. So, but you can dye them any color. Um, pastas are really fun filler for sensory bins. You can also do cooked spaghetti. Um, that's my least favorite. I do do it, but it's my least favorite. The texture creeps me out. He doesn't mind, he loves it. But um, you just basically cook some spaghetti, put some water, just a little bit of water, and then some food coloring and mix it all up and uh, let it kind of sit for a minute and then put it in the sensory bin with whatever. And it's like fun colored spaghetti. You could also do that for dinner, make like a fun spaghetti. Uh, for example, Dr. Seuss day, we will do green eggs and ham in the morning and probably green spaghetti at night, you know, something like that. But these are fun little bats that I have. All right, let's see what else is in this bin. More beans. Uh, oh, these are fun. The colored bath drops. They're like little fizzy bath drops, but they um, watercoloring tablets. So you can put them in your bath, but I use them for sensory bin stuff too. I have baby oil, which is great for making kind of um, mixing it with flour or cornstarch or whatever to kind of give like a kinetic sand. There's tons of recipes on Facebook on what to use baby oil with um, for kinetic or for sensory bins. So I have a box of that. And then I've showed you guys this before, but I will show you again. Boop. These are my wood sensory bin accoutrement. Um, I have a scooper. I have like a wood little container another scooper, 
just, you know, I just kind of throw these in for him to scoop up and move the items around. He really likes them. There's also uh, these little tweezer things. Let's see what else is in here? Another little pot. So I got these on Amazon. There's a bunch of different ones, but this is the one I got and I will link it below. It comes in a cute little bag. So this has been really great for uh, motor skills, encouraging him to scoop and move things from container to container. So I really suggest something like this as well. Okay, so that is this bucket. Um, I do have some loose things in here, uh, like, like a stamp, which does not belong in this. So I will put this in the right place. Okay, so I will clean all that up. A minute. Next bin. These are my figurines, I think. Yep. I also have, I don't know what happened to it. I thought I still had it. I have gravel here somewhere. Maybe it's in this one. I have black gravel somewhere. I don't know where it went. Um, that I use for water stuff also. That's a really great activity. Um, the black gravel is, you know, a nice texture underneath the water. So just a suggestion. I also do not know where my full roll of this went. It's somewhere in the house. I'm sure it will show up eventually, but uh, this I got for uh, Declan's first birthday, Very Hungry Caterpillar. This was the runner underneath the centerpiece, and I just cut a little piece so that it fits in the sensory bin, and so this kind of like when I do, and I, I've used this before in some videos, but when I do um, like on the farm or something else, this is just like a part of the sensory bin that's grass and then I'll fill the rest with like kinetic sand or you know, something else so that's like sand and grass uh, or um, you know, blue rice. So it's, you know, water to a lake. So, um, or sand to a lake. So I, I do have this, it's a nice texture. And then these are, bath toys but I use them in sensories it comes with a cute little fishing pole Boop. and all the fish have little magnets on it um, except apparently this shark oh no it's in the back Boop. see now it's really difficult even for me and myself and Pat to get these on the fishing pole um, so I usually what I do is if we're doing a fishing sensory bin I will give him this, we'll throw the fishies in, um, he'll usually just throw this around and like kind of swing it around and then we, we work on using these to scoop up the fish. So we have all different kinds of fishies in here and, and a squid, so these are fun. I like these, these are the best quality in terms of like some of my figurines because they are kind of a, like a cheap plastic, but they've stood up. Um, and then, you know, you don't always have to buy the most realistic looking stuff. They were a nice price and I really do like them. So, so there's that. All right. I've used these before. You guys have seen these if you've seen my videos, but these are my, uh, Melissa and Doug wood magnets, wood, wood animal magnets. Um, uh, I use these for my morning lessons. I put them on our uh, Melissa and Doug magnetic thing, display thing. Um, I also use these for, if I wanna do a baking sheet, flip it over, line up some baking sheets, um, put these there for him to remove the magnets. But I also just throw them in the sensory bin sometimes. Um, recently, I used them in this. So I hid the animals in the paper and he had a fun time uh, finding these. These are really great, I love these magnets. Speaking of magnets, I also have these foam magnets, which I also really like. Um, they have their animal and fruit and vehicles and vegetable themes. So here's a pineapple. The, the only issue that I have with these is that, um, there's a feather in there. That's not my issue. <laughs> is that he likes to chew on these too. And these are, these don't hold up very well to chewing. These do but these do not. Um, so I have to really be, make, make sure, and some of them are smaller, so I go through and make sure that I don't put out like the smaller ones. Um, 
but these are awesome. I really enjoy these. These are the, I use these for the same purposes, um, to put on a baking sheet for him to pull off, to work on vegetables and fruit names, animals. They're a little bit more cartoony, so I don't use them for like our animal lessons because I prefer ones that are more realistic, but these are a lot of fun. I, I like the little, I like them. I just don't use them as much as the Melissa and Doug. So these will be great. I think when he's a little bit older too. I also keep these on the fridge and in the kitchen and they occupy him if, if I'm cooking. He'll just keep swatting them off. Okay, so my farm animals. These were from Melissa and Doug. These are kind of fuzzy. And these are my farm animals. I have a lot of Melissa and Doug guys, if you haven't noticed. I really love their product, it's very quality. So these are all my farm animals. These are the ones I turned into reindeer if you saw that video. I use these in farm playset and also when working with animal lessons. So for my sensory bin, these are my figurines when I use my farm set. Um, I also have used these for when I did like a train sensory bin and I put the train track in there with the train and then kind of made it look like it was going through a pasture. I had some of these animals so it's fun to have these figurines to just kind of be creative with. So these are my Melissa and Doug. There's a pig too. And then my shark. Um, I have used these on the, on the channel before when I did my shark infested beach with the blue rice. But here are my sharks. I also use these with water. But um, Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. So these are great quality figurines too. So I will link these obviously below as well. So my sharks. My dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. They're my favorite. Oops. So I really hope that Declan believes or not believes, but thinks that they're awesome as well. Because I have a ton of dinosaur activities for when he gets older planned. Okay, so here are my little dinosaur figurines. I've used these to do dinosaur lessons to teach them the names of the dinosaurs. And then we've also done like land before time sensory bin. Uh, basically sand, grass, dinosaurs. It's, it's fun to have the figurines because if you have the basic fillers for sensory bins, like the kinetic sand, um, like cloud dough, like play dough, like something like this. You can just throw in the figurines and change it up completely. Uh, have the exact same filler, change the fig figurines. It goes from farm to dinosaurs to the jungle. Uh, so it's really fun to have various types. Speaking of various types, here are my jungle animals. These guys I use a lot in my jello mold sensory bins. So I put these poor little creatures into jello. Hello. Am I interrupting? Kind of, but not really. I'm just sharing all the stuff that I have. Did this one explode? It did. Because I'm just sharing all the sensory stuff. I'm gonna make some lunch. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so um, these are the jungle animals that I have. And I, like I said, I put them in jello and put them in the fridge, and then he just pulls them out of the jello. So that's really fun to do. Let's see what else. Oh, my insects. Here are all the insect ones. These are giant. I really like these because they are very realistic looking, but they're huge. So I will post those below as well. Anything else? Let's see. I have my frogs, like I told you before, with the sensory bins, um, with the floating, what do you call those? These. <laughs> These 
these are the frogs that I use with that. And then I also have some snakes and lizards. So that's kind of what I have for my figurines. Oh, here's my Halloween stuff. So I have some pumpkins, some skeletons, some skulls, which is cauldron. So I used a an orange rice, um, the bats, which are somewhere buried now. Here, bats and these. So that was my Halloween sensory bin that I did. Okay, so there's that. Last but not least, here are all the fillers. Oh God, this bag is heavy. Wow, I did not expect that. Ugh. Okay, here are all the fillers that I have for the sensory bin stuff. Number one, kinetic sands. I need more of this. This is one bag, this is three pounds. Um, right now it has some blue rice in it because I didn't pick it out very well from my last one, but that's all right. So this is the kinetic sand. I love kinetic sand. If you haven't used it before, I highly recommend it. I spent one Sunday dyeing rice and my amazing, wonderful husband came up with the idea of baking it instead of just leaving it on the counter. So I think we did what? It was a 275 for like 20 minutes. How long did we bake this rice for? Do you remember? Uh, 20 minutes? Okay. I think we did 275 for about 20 minutes. Basically what I did was I took, I think this, I, last video, one of the last videos I said five cups. I think this is more like seven cups, but anyways, so however much rice you want, a little bit of water with some food coloring. Mix it all up, pour it out on a baking sheet and bake it for about 20 minutes at 275 and it dries up. So I have blue, I have, this is supposed to be red. It came out pink, but I pretend it's red. So I use it in the red uh, sensory bin. Hopefully that doesn't confuse him. <laughs> but anyways, red. I have orange, boom, green, purple, is that it? And that's it. Oh, and here's this, aha, I knew it was here somewhere. This is the aquarium sand that I told you guys about that I use when we do water play with um, the frogs or the sharks. So we have that. And last but not least is my rainbow oats. It's a little bit beat up because it's been at the bottom. But what I did was I took, wow, it really is. Let me open it a little bit. Let's give it some, oh, let it breathe. Okay. I took oats the same way I did the rice. And I divided them up in different colors. And then I mix it all together to make rainbow oats. So I use this a lot with cars um, and construction sites. So that's what that looks like. Okay. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is kind of everything that I have. Um, the mess that I made is pretty incredible. So I'm going to work on cleaning this up right now. But hopefully that gives you kind of a starter point or an idea of how to put together some sensory bins and um, go from there. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye.